Yep, welcome back to Sports Tonight. Richard Oliver joins Astros Baseball as he does every single week. Great to see you, my man. Lots to talk about. Let's start with the Usher break. Yeah. Bregman had himself quite the little break with the home run derby on Monday and then MVP performance in the Usher game the following night. I know you were watching, so your oh, first yeah. thoughts when you see Bregman do what he ends up doing is... Did you have the same thought I did when he stepped up to the plate and the he said, here we go. Something's going to happen. Here we go. I mean, yeah. what Alex Bregman has shown, and this is only his second full season. You know, it's just amazing when you think about it, because I feel like Alex Bregman's been around for such a long time. Yeah. Not true. What he has done, though, is, of course, we could talk about the batting average. We could talk about all the different kind of things that the guy is just one of the great hitters in the game now. But what he does in money time is just amazing. And I love the fact that everybody saw it. We saw it in the World Series last year, had the game-winning hit against the Dodgers in one of the games. Then in the All-Star game, which probably has a broader audience in a lot of ways, uh, he comes up with that big hit. And then to see Springer do it, I thought it was hilarious when Springer had that gr just a, a line drive single in his previous at bat, and they caught him on the microphone and says, why can't I do that in the regular season? Right. <laughs> it's been that kind of a season for George Springer as well. I remember last July talking to the great Craig Biggio, and he's naming off the Astros' young core and how good they are. And he names Altuve and Keiko and Correa and Springer, and he mentioned Bregman's name in there. Right. I remember thinking, wow, he's throwing Bregman in that group. Well, Biz isn't the only guy who kind of saw this coming a little bit. Back when we first started doing these ready-to-repeat Astro segments, the beginning of the season, remember you were high on Alex Bregman and telling me, hey, look out for Bregs. He's going to have a fantastic season this time around. Nostradamus Oliver over here. <laughs> well, and I'm not sure I was the Nostradamus. I was the second edition of that because when you and I were in West Palm Beach for spring training, A.J. Hinch told us Alex Bregman honestly in his heart feels he's the best player in baseball. I mean, this is a guy who feels and believes that he can get it done in the toughest situations. And he's shown it so far this year. Uh, three game-winning hits, including that kind of goofy one throw off the helmet, whatever that thing was. <laughs> right. You know, so I look at those kind of things, and I think, you know, Alex Bregman... Those are, the, those are the guys who win you championships. The guys who aren't projected to be your cleanup hitter, your, your ace starter you know, on the mound, uh, the guy who's going to be the, the guy that you want clutch like Altuve in those kind of moments, you know, you think this is the guy, the contact hitter. I would dare say right now, a little past the midway point of the season, that Alex Bregman in a tough situation, in a money situation, is the guy you would want at home plate for you if you're a Houston Astros fan. And that includes Altuve, it includes Correa when he's healthy. Anybody, I think Alex Bregman's a guy. Says a ton about him and this team, considering mm -hmm. the talent around him. Let's recap, and then let's look forward. Mm -hmm. First, the recap. First half, your takeaway, good and bad for the Astros. Well, you can't be too unhappy with how the Astros looked uh, in the first half of the season. They're, at this point of the season, they're a game ahead of where they were last year. They're playing great baseball. A couple of little hiccups there, you know, in series that they probably should have done better in Tampa. Uh, you know, and of course at home, they didn't have great, the greatest home stand at the stretch. But that said, the starting pitching has been remarkable, you know, with some exceptions. Uh, I think the league has really had a hard time catching up with those pitchers and what they've done. Top six spots in that lineup, the Astros have been wonderful. They got, they're going to get Correa back. McCann will be back at some point. They haven't been healthy for a while. So first half of the season, at this point, five games up in the American League West, I'll take it. I think the Astros probably happy to be there. I love that they're getting pushed a little bit. That doesn't bother me. Uh, and uh, Oakland, Seattle, of course, good. Looking ahead, just studying the schedule as we look ahead, they start at the Angels, probably the most underwhelming team in the league, I would think. I think most people thought the Angels were going to be something extraordinary this year. Hasn't happened. And I think, you know, you look at that, the Astros have the eighth easiest schedule in Major League Baseball, looking at current standings as we head down the stretch. You got to like that if you're an Astros fan. You really do. And you mentioned the Angels. That's who the Astros start the second half. We're past the midway point. Right, right. If the All-Star break kind of denotes the midway point, then the Angels is who the Astros start the second half of the season with tomorrow uh, with a brand new series out there. My man Richard, always yep. a pleasure. Much appreciated. You bet. We'll see you next week. It's going to be fun. Brought to you by Ansiro Volkswagen, where a 2018 Passat S is just $16,615. Number one in San Antonio, that's Ansira Volkswagen on Bandera Road. You're watching Sports Tonight, San Antonio's only nightly 30-minute sportscast with exclusive sports coverage you won't find anywhere else.